Hey everyone, Giselle here, and welcome to my third vlog for the Newt's Readathon. To update you, I guess, on what I've read so far. Okay, so essentially, I have Ancient Runes number one, or an A in Ancient Runes. A A and an E in astronomy, an A and an E in care of magical creatures, an A and an E in herbology, an A and an E in muggle studies, and there's a few more books I think I'm going to finish today. I've read other books besides just those, but they don't count because they were for like O's or E's when I don't have my A or E yet. But that's what I have so far that counts. So I have nine newts and today is the 12th of August, which I'm trying to get all 36. So that's not lining up quite right. So I think what my goal for this week is going to be is try to get my A's in a lot of things and then maybe get my O and E's and a few others, but like start reading them in order because I haven't been. And that was like initially my goal is that I really needed to cross off a, a ton of books that I had checked out from the library that were getting returned soonest. But now that I've like completed all of those books over the past two weeks, I really don't have any obligations of like needing to finish anything except for like two books over the next couple weeks. And those two books I have to read with Christopher because we're listening to them together. So I'm really all set with that. So that means I can pretty much just like read what... I need to read but of course I've started this off by doing two things that are not working into that but then I have a third book that I'm reading that is working into that so what I'm currently reading is I'm still currently reading summer days and summer nights this is edited by Stephanie Perkins and as of right now I have one story left which I was planning on getting to tomorrow but depending on how things pan out maybe I'll read it today I listened to one story this morning uh, it is it is 12 o'clock, by the way, uh, 12.20, and Christopher is still asleep. I'm gonna go wake him up soon because he's been asleep for, like, eight hours, and I want to be in the bedroom, so I'm gonna kick him out. I really wanna, like, organize my clothes in there and hang up my skirts, because I don't have, like, I have so many that aren't hung up right now that I need to hang up, so that's what I want to do with that. Anyway, so... As far as Summer Days and Summer Nights, I listened to the next story, which is A Thousand Ways This Could All Go Wrong by Jennifer E. Smith. I said in the last vlog that I was really excited to read this one because I've been wanting to read books by her, and I loved it. Like, I think it's a five-star story for me as well, so I have two five-stars from this collection, which I'm happy about. I really, really like this. It's And, to make it even better, I'm doing the Summer Romance uh, Ripped Bodice Book Bingo. And one of the things, one of the challenges that they have is to read a book set at summer camp. And I really was struggling finding something that I wanted to read that was set at summer camp. The only thing I could think of that I was like remotely okay with reading was when Dimple, re when Dimple met Rishi, which I'm not in the mood for because I heard so many negative things about it. And like, it's one of those books that like I want to try eventually but I've heard so many negative things, and I think the problem is that people are pointing out that they had with the book are things that would really annoy me, so that's why I've been staying clear of it. But I was going to read it for this challenge, and I was going to fit it in and do it for, like, a book uh, from a new-to-you author and fit it in there because I need to read a book by someone at summer camp. But this book, In Summer Days and Summer Nights, A Thousand Ways It Could Go Wrong, is set at summer camp, so I'm just going to use this for that challenge. And I can take Twin Dimble Met Rishi off my TBR, which I'm really, really happy about. So instead, I can fit almost anything else in there. So I've, like, rearranged my TBR a little bit this morning. I did that while listening to my other book that I'm currently reading, or one of my other books that I'm currently reading. And I've decided to, instead of re reading um, When Dimple Met Rishi for that challenge, I can switch Rappuccini's Daughter by Nathaniel Hawthorne in there, because I do really want to get to that, and I've never read anything by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Not even The Scarlet Letter, because I never had to read it for school, so I haven't gotten to it yet. So this is perfect, because I really didn't want to take that book off my TBR, but it just wasn't fitting in anymore, even though it was originally in there. But now, I can put it back in, and... I'm very happy about that. So that's the develop 
developments for this morning. The book that I was listening to while rearranging my TBR um, was The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. Uh, this is actually counting for my O in potions, and I don't have my A or my E, so this is not going to count for a couple weeks. Probably closer to when the readathon's over. Probably like a week from now I'll have my O in here. Anyway, I'm seven hours through. I have four hours left. Um, I've listened to five hours this morning, so doing pretty good on that, and I am really liking it. I suspected that I would really like it because uh, Christopher read this series a couple years ago, and he really liked it and told me I should read it, and I don't know if I've ever read a book that Christopher's read that I've hated or disliked. Normally, if he tells me that something is good, even if it's like not necessarily my taste, I at least like it. And then if he tells me that he thinks I should read something, I almost always really enjoy it. So he's really good at picking out my taste personally. So I knew I would probably really like this, but at the same time I was kind of wary because I don't read a lot of young adult fiction anymore. But I was re I'm really liking it. It's it's so weird, though, because I feel like not a lot is happening, yet so much time has passed, like, as far as listening. Like, I'm seven hours through, and I don't feel like a ton has happened. It's, like, a very slow book, in my opinion. But it's really engaging, and I'm very intrigued by the characters and the story and everything. So, I mean, I'm really happy to be reading it, and it will probably be, like, a four-star book for me. And it's great, so... That's awesome. The other thing that I'm currently reading I have on my old phone on the other room, but I'm listening to uh, Suddenly You by Lisa Klaipas, and this is going to be for a book at least 300 pages long, which is the first, which is an A in arithmetic, so I will be getting my A like tomorrow probably, so that's good. And that's my goals for the day, so I've listened to like six hours so far and it's noon so I have plenty of time to get to my goal which my goal for Fridays and Sundays is to listen to 14 hours of audiobooks and then my goals for Saturday is to get to 12 hours and then my goals for <laughs> Monday through Thursday is to get to seven hours so I should be able to get to 14 hours today I still have about 10 hours to read to get to that so That'll be fine since I'm halfway there already. And now I can go annoy Christopher and get some more cleaning done. I've been doing a lot of work on around the house. This needs to get cleared off. But besides that, honestly, the house is looking pretty darn good. Like there's a few things, like there's like little spots of stuff that need to be cleaned, yes, and like organized and stuff like that. But like, if you could see how completely trashed this place was, like even a week ago. This is great progress. Some things I just need to find like homes for, like all my chain mail making stuff down here. I have no idea where that should go. I need to find a home for it though, because I have all these links and I have like tubes in the process of being made and like my wire cutters and all the stuff. Like I have so much to do with it. And I have this like random janky cat -o -nines that I made when I was in high school and like I don't know what to do with it but Chris won't let me get rid of it so I guess I'll make him find a place for it and then this box and this box are all things uh to get rid of um that we don't need anymore and don't want anymore and so like it's coming together house is finally coming together it's been such a mess for so long and and part of that includes get, kicking Christopher out of the room so I can hang up my clothes <laughs>
you're new here, ignore the fridge. It likes to yell. Anyway, these are... What are they, Christopher? They're just keto pancakes. Keto pancakes. But what, are, just, what is in them? It's just a mixture of eggs and cream cheese and a little bit of uh, uh, zero calorie sweetener and a little bit of cinnamon. And, yeah. They're very... They're like a lot... They're a little bit more different than normal pancakes. They're thinner. Yeah. Uh, but... They're, I already had one because I messed it up completely. I definitely know better what I'm doing now for next time. I'm definitely making these again, but I'm going to make them better next time. But they're like, I don't know. They're really easy. They take a little bit of time to cook. So I'm going to I'm gonna try it. And then I also have, oh, you can like see like the cream cheese in there. It's really interesting. Because we don't have a blender. It's supposed to be blended up more, but I don't have a blender. So I did the best I could. Oh yeah, and it has cinnamon in there too. Mm -hmm. The texture is weird. It's not very like I don't know. It's it doesn't like, have any flour in it. It's too. Not... It's cheerier than normal pancakes, but, yeah, it but the taste flour. is really good. In it. I like it. So they're... I, I have whipped cream and berries to put on it, and they're good. It almost makes you think of like since the cinnamon is so it almost makes you think of like pumpkin pancakes or something like that, yeah. like a a specialty pancake. They're good. Yeah. a lot. <laughs> Ta-da! So we're throwing it back like super old school to an outfit of the day. I used to do these in our daily vlogs pretty frequently. So today I have like a flowered blue and pink like romper that goes down to my ankles and then just like black sandals. Pretty basic. And then just a blue car cardigan with blue lipstick because obviously. And then I curled my hair so it's like a bit of a bob right now. I think it's really cute. I like it. And technically I when I originally like put this outfit together like a few months ago, just like in my head, I was like Disney bounding in my head as like one of the centaurs from <laughs> Fantasia. So if you want to imagine that, that's what I am. But anyway, I just think it's, it's fun and it's comfortable and it was nice for running some errands. So after three years of having like all the same kitchen stuff that we've had like the whole time we've been together essentially, Christopher was like, we need to get some new stuff for our kitchen. And I was like, <laughs> yes please. So we went to Target together and Christopher was shocked by the amount of stuff we bought. It seems about on par for what I thought we'd buy. So <laughs> anyway, I figured I'd show you really quickly what we're revamping the kitchen with. So This is plus the new kitchen knives we just ordered online as well. Yes, we bought new kitchen knives and we're gonna buy... Didn't you buy something else as well? It's, it's just like a drawer uh, container, like drawer, like, like a silver organizer. Rare, a silverware organizer. thing for our silverware drawer. Like one that like expands because ours does not fit very well at all and is overflowing. So, so that... the, the new one will fit really well and hold everything we need it to hold. So. And I think also I want to get some of those like little like like silicone like containers that you like it's just like half a thing and you just stick it over like cut fruit and stuff I would like to get like a set of those as well it usually comes with like four or five for like different sizes and I want to get that on like Amazon or something we couldn't find it at Target but here's everything else we bought just now so we got some dish towels this is I guess our new like color scheme ignore the fridge <laughs> we also got um, more measuring cups and spoons. We wanted to get ones that like wouldn't rub off the measurements because that always happens. So we got some where it's like imprinted. It's impossible. I got a new bath towel for myself because it's almost my birthday and it's beautiful. And I wow, a, a bath towel for a birthday present. I'm gonna use it too. <laughs> I don't know why you're saying it's just for you. It's I just love it. It's my favorite <laughs> color green, and it just makes me so happy. I saw it and I was like, I need it. 
tissues because I've been sick and I used all the whole t all the tissues in the whole house. Body wash for me because I've been struggling a lot with like scented products and this has like a super mild scent so I don't think it will give me a headache which is nice. Uh, we bought like a ton of Ziploc bags because we needed some more. And then here's when we start to get into like some of the newer things. Like we got a cutting board that has like little sticky things on the back so it won't slide, which will be really nice. I hate our cutting boards right now. We also got more Tupperware because we're getting rid of like all the ones with like missing lids or that are like really, really gross. Christopher wanted to get like a very firm spatula because he said- I wanted one without holes. Yeah, he was struggling flipping earlier. <laughs> we got a Swiffer duster thing because Chris bought like the Swiffer part, like the, like, the, the parts. Yeah, the like refill like months ago, and we never actually bought the stick. So now we have the stick. I've just been putting it on my hand and using it that way. <laughs> and then this is one of the most exciting things we got. We got a we got a kitchen scale finally, a food scale. So now we'll be able to like measure stuff out for like keto and stuff, and just in general, it's such a handy thing to have. I also got a pillow. I have like a lot of like leg pain when trying to sleep a lot of times so I wanted to get a pillow like specifically to stick between my legs to help to like relieve the pressure. We also, oops, we also got dish soap and Drano. So exciting. <laughs> and finally the most exciting thing is, <laughs> it's my birthday, don't judge me. It's a little Tsum Tsum like Alice in Wonderland themed set. So like there's the white rabbit's house and then there's like a little Alice and there, there is a Cheshire cat wearing a Mad Hatter hat. I'm literally dead. Giselle's birthday is on Thursday, so. Is it? Yeah. Oh, it is. I didn't realize it was that soon. Yeah, I still Thursday. feel like it's like weeks away. Nope. I totally forgot it was my birthday this month till Chris reminded me. He's like, oh, it's your birthday. And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> so I'm kind of milking it a little bit. I think I might like buy myself one more thing and then that will be it for like birthday presents. But yeah, this was Christopher's birthday present to me. Thanks, babe. <laughs> And also, I bought these all yesterday, but I figured I would show them right now because I'm wanting to, like, snack on these more. I got cashews, just, like, salted cashews. And then I also got Spanish peanuts. I haven't had these in a long time, but I remember really liking them. And all it is is peanuts, peanut oil, and sea salt. So, pretty simple. And then I ended up getting zesty chili lime peanuts which are actually quite good they're not as strong or as spicy as I wish they were I wish they were a little bit like spicier but they're still pretty good and then these are delicious blue al diamond almonds honey roasted cinnamon these are freaking delicious and I've been really really enjoying these and then I also just have like plain peanuts that I had before so I think this will be like a nice varied way of like snacking at work. So as far as like a wrap up for my reading so far it is 6 p.m. now. Christopher and I have about 40 minutes left of The Case of the Bizarre Bouquets by Nancy Springer. This is the third book in the Enola Holmes mystery series. How are you liking it so far? It's good. Yeah? I like it. I think I like uh, all three about the same so and, far? Yeah. They could. I, I really like Anola a lot. Yeah. And I really like Nancy Springer's writing. I like how, like, um, like snarky and stuff. And, like, I don't know, just, like, how much she, she's, like, commentating on people of the time and things of the time. It's really great. Yeah. I love Nancy Springer's writing. And you can just tell, Paul, like, how much research she put into these books. What I really love about them is, like, how it brings to light all these, like, almost, like, forgotten traditions of like the Victorian era like things that I know even me as like I feel like I'm like at least like decently well educated on like the time for not having really studied it very thoroughly like just as like a casual liker of the time period how much I learn from these like children's books about it it's insane and I love how insanely feminist these are this is really the book that was like the game changer in the series to like being like man I love this series but books four book five and book six are phenomenal like book one two book and three are really good four five and six amazing so I'm really excited to get to them but you're liking them 
Yeah. Are they like three Starbucks for you? Maybe like three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. yeah. That's, that seems about right. Christopher doesn't usually love children's literature like quite as much as me, so I'll forgive him for that. But if he doesn't love book just, five and book six as much as I do, I, I may have to kill it's him. It's just <laughs> hard. I read so many other mysteries, it's just hard for me to give... I mean, I it is. I just like I like it. I am enjoying reading it. So, <laughs> as far as other reading, I'm now a little over seven hours into the Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. This is really fun so far. I'm really liking it. Chris really likes these, as I mentioned before. So, yeah, yeah I'm I. Not sure you don't hate them. Yeah, I like them. I I already told them that I probably would like them because you have good taste in books. <laughs> so, I think Chris is a lot more likely to hate a book that I love than for me to hate a book that he loves. That as far as, as far as genres that we both are okay with. And I don't usually like YA very much. Yeah. And I really like the Raven Boy series. But, so. I mean, like, I don't know about me reading ever, like, ever reading some Stephen King, so maybe I would hate those. But, like, as far as that goes, like, Chris usually has pretty good taste. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, I'm also a little, I'm really close to being two hours into Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik, and I really, really like it so far. I was getting super sucked into it, so this is, I think, what I'm going to try to focus on probably for the rest of the night, or at least get another hour or two into it, because I really like it a lot. She is so amazing and so, like, I don't know. I don't want to call her like heart, like cold hearted or whatever, but she doesn't put up with people's BS and everyone's like, oh, how can you do that? You're so mean. But I think she's awesome for not doing that. And I love that she's just like, I'm not going to put up with your crap. I'm going to take your money that you owe me and you can suck it up because you borrowed from me. So it's your fault. I really like her a lot. I'm super enjoying that one. And ugh. I was, I was a little worried going into it that I wouldn't like totally love it, but I am really loving it. And then the other one that I'm currently reading reaction to it. is I'm about halfway through Suddenly You, and this is by Lisa Kleypas. I'm four and a half hours through, and I have four and 45 minutes left, so just just under the halfway mark. So these are like my four like big things that I'm working on and I haven't made any progress in summer days and summer nights. So I'll probably be ban bouncing back and forth between all of like these three and then case of the bizarre bouquets, Christopher and I will probably try to finish up either tonight or tomorrow to and from work. And then it gets returned about 7 p.m. tomorrow so we just need to get it done by then which will be fine and now i need to go put all this stuff away i'm an adult and i'm gonna open up these things yay 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 All right, so this is my little Alice setup. I love it so much. Um, I made this little uh, white rabbit and I also made a little Ariel like well over a year ago, but I made them so I guess I can put them in here. I don't even know where. I guess I could put the white rabbit actually in the door and then have this white rabbit chilling out over here or something which he has a hat that I could put on him let me see oh no this only fits on the small ones well I don't know then but I do have a little one as well so maybe I'll stick him up in this top window and then Ariel I'm just gonna shove in here <laughs> okay <laughs> 
And then I, there's a few pieces that I couldn't use because I didn't have enough of the little things. It's actually a little headband. It's so cute. And then there, the other one I didn't use was like the Tweedledee hat. Anyway, those can go back here for now. Little Tweedledee hat. Or Tweedledum. Either one. Anyway, I really, really love it. One of my favorite things is probably these glasses on Alice. And obviously some of these I had before. I already had the Cheshire Cat and his little thing. I already had the White Rabbit and his little thing. And I had the Queen of Hearts with her little thing. And Alice. And I think that's all I had before. Besides like the ones that I made. Which actually, let's compare them really quickly. So the one that I made is obviously the itty bitty little one. And him. And then this is what he looks like from the front. So, I made his eyes kind of demon red, but this because they are red in the movie. But, honestly, I was making it just purely off of, like, I don't know. I guess what he thought he should look like. And I think he looks pretty darn good. Good job, me. Because I didn't have this one when I made this one. Oh, I like him on the roof. I'll leave him there. Anyway, there's my little, my little village. I love it. I love the Tolji wood, and I love Alice with her little thing. I don't like that this Alice is all sparkly, but whatever. And I just, oh my gosh, I love it so much. My two favorites, though, are probably the two little mini Tsum Tsums, because they're adorable with their little hats on. I don't know if you can tell with these spot in there, but it says drink me right there. It's been about two minutes and here's an update. I added this. I forgot that I had it sitting over there. My wonderful friend Judas sent this to me and I just thought it fit perfectly and this oh, is so perfect. So I put it there. It like matches the color scheme brilliantly. So I've added that there. I added this tiny little book here as well. This is English because why not? And I also, I moved the bread and butterfly up here. He he was down here, but Chris said that he was dead. So I put him in here instead. So now he's just going to be eaten. And the last thing I do remember um, is this board book edition of Alice in Wonderland that I absolutely adore. This is a wonderful and I loved it so much that I bought it for myself for just for fun. <laughs> I don't know, I think back in like April or so because it's immersion. And so I added that in because I had it sitting over there as well. So that is my completed Alice shelf. I'm really, really happy with it. I love it so much. I love Alice in Wonderland so much and this is just like the perfect shrine for it. So it's now 11.30 on a Sunday night. Today is the 12th, by the way. I'm sure I said that. Uh, I'm really tired now, so I'm going to go to bed and I just caught something in my eye and it's very uncomfortable. But I figured I'd update you on today's stats. I just, I barely made my goal today, which, I mean, I spent a lot of time with Chris today talking with him. We went to the store. We just hung out a lot and talked a lot and stuff like that. Plus, I slept in. So I'm not really surprised, but I am glad I at least made my goal. So I got to 14 hours today, which is good. This is what my bullet journal looks like so far. I'm really enjoying filling this out. It's just so satisfying. And then I've started the next page, as you guys saw. And yeah, it's all, it's all good. So let me see. Today, yeah, I got to 14 hours. So I, I read that. 
next story in Summer Days and Summer Nights. I'm now three hours through Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik and I am loving it. Oh my gosh. It almost has like a Game of Thrones like the others vibe which is super interesting. There's like these people who live in the snow and like everyone's terrified of them and they're like folklore creatures and it's like giving me Game of Thrones vibes. But besides that I'm just like loving all the characters and I'm just super enjoying it. I was really hoping to enjoy it but based off of how much I liked Uprooted I was like not setting my hopes too high because I I didn't love Uprooted. I did like it but I I wish it had ended differently than it had and that's like what really brought my like enjoyment down from like a four star to a three star but I still did really like it. I'm expecting this one to get kind of gruesome though because there were some scenes in Uprooted that got quite gruesome. Anyway, I'm really enjoyed it though and I'm super excited to continue listening to it over the next week. It's one that it's like over 400 pages long the book. The audiobook is 18 hours long so it's the longest book on my TBR so I was planning on stretching it out over the course of a week but I'm enjoying it so much which I'm really happy about. I'm also currently reading Suddenly You by Lisa Claypes. I am now six hours through uh, which is quite good. I'm really excited about that. I'm liking it a lot it's very interesting. So basically this is one of Lisa Claypuss's like older books and I think Tantor just picked it up on audio like last month I think. They decided to publish it like they published it last month so obviously way before that they decided to publish it and got it narrated and stuff. So it's like really interesting but I am really liking it. I'm very hit or miss with Lisa Claypuss. I feel like I'm very hit or miss with like most romance authors but with her I don't know I've really hated some of her books and really liked some of hers but I think this is going to be one of the higher ones that I like it's about like a spinster author and she's great and I really like her she ends up she ends up hiring like a male prostitute on her 30th birthday and then like through like some sort of like mix up and weird circumstances instead of a prostitute coming to her house a publisher ends up coming to her house and they end up like sort of starting an affair but really just like starting off like a really interesting like relationship like he's gonna publish one of her like first books I think her like very first book and stuff and it's really interesting but I'm really enjoying that and I really like both the characters and Something made me very happy about this as well because at the beginning she doesn't know who she is. She she thinks he's like the male escort and he he's not. He didn't know that that's what she was expecting and he doesn't like take advantage of the situation. Like he does end up kissing with her and like flirting with her a bit and stuff and she's like oh well like she's like okay let's do it and he was like no. And he ends up leaving, which I really like. And the reason that he does that is because he's like, wow, this woman's awesome and I really respect her. And I don't want to, like, take advantage of her or put her in this situation without, like, her 100% knowing what she's doing because she doesn't know who I am. And I really, really love that. If Lisa Claypass can do this however many years ago this was published, then I think Alyssa Cole can do this with her Reluctant Royal series because in the first book of that the guy doesn't tell the girl who he is and ends up sleeping with her and then there's like this huge big thing about like oh my gosh like that's really skeevy and then she ends up forgiving him like way too easily I thought and it just really really annoyed me I'm like that is so gross that he did that and so I'm really glad that this book didn't do that and so it almost instantly won my love for it but I really love, I'm enjoying the characters I, th I think the main flaw for this book so far is just that there was a bit of like telling and not showing so she ends up basically like there's something along the lines of, and he ended up coming to her house like twice a week and having dinner with her, blah, 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 blah. And then it skips to one of the times. So I feel like they 
barely known each other at all. This is like only like maybe their fourth meeting when really this is probably like their 20th meeting or even more because she skipped all of those times. And so like now they're having this like repertoire and this like back and forth and these things that they're talking about and they're like, oh, remember this and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, I don't because you skipped it all. So I just needed a little bit more, like even just like two more chapters or three more chapters of them getting to know each other so I actually felt like they had like a good basis of friendship because now they have a good basis of friendship before they even start a relationship at all and now they're starting a relationship and i not believing everything. That's like my one like flaw with this book that I just needed a few more chapters instead of like telling me that they had these conversations you needed to show me that they had these conversations before you moved on to the later stuff but I am really liking it a lot and I'm having fun with it and then as far as the Raven Boys goes I'm only eight hours through I would I really did want to finish this today but it just wasn't in the cards I forgot that I don't know how I completely just like spaced on this but I did end up Skyping with my parents-in-law for like an hour and then with all this time with Christopher and things like that, I just didn't end up finishing it. So unfortunately, that didn't happen. But that means that I'm only three hours from the end of finishing Suddenly You and I'm only three hours from the end of finishing The Raven Boys, and I'm only like two hours or an hour and a half from the end of finishing Summer Days and Summer Nights, so that means, oh, and I'm only like 45 minutes from the end of finishing um, The Case of the Bizarre Bouquet, so I'm gonna finish like somewhere between two and four books tomorrow, and then the next day I will finish up anything else left, so that's good. On a Monday to end up finishing um, four things I think is pretty good so hopefully that happens tomorrow even though I wasn't able to, to wrap anything up today which is okay because I'm still hitting my goals and I'm like on track slash ahead of where I need to be so good stuff but now I'm gonna go to bed I'm just gonna watch YouTube videos while I fall asleep so I won't end up reading any more tonight and tomorrow I do have work all day tomorrow I worked eight hours each Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I have a seven hour shift on Saturday. So I do have work for the next four days, but I'm gonna finish at least like five books over the next few days, which, whew. <laughs> All right, so it's Monday and I just got back from work. I just finished two books. We literally finished The Case of the Bizarre Bouquets six minutes before it was due actually I think it was like 10 minutes before it was due and I looked at it six minutes before it was due and I was like wow we barely finished that by the skin of our teeth so that was perfect timing I really enjoyed it I think it's I think it's my second least favorite out of the series but I still really really like it the series is phenomenal uh, the second book's my least favorite and then I think the third and then I have to like reread four, five, and six before I determine that order. But I really, really love the series, and this is counting for a book that I think will leave a mark, or it could count for a book under two hundred pages. Either one. Let me see. If I count it for a book under two hundred pages, I don't get an out. Oh no! Sorry, I'm counting it for a book that's a retelling. There we go. Because I changed my whole TBR around. TBR around. So I just got my first. Oh yay! <laughs> so in Muggle Studies, I read book from a favorite author, Born to be Wild by Eloisa James, which I didn't like. I gave two stars. The Woman Who Smashed Codes by Jason Fagon as a biography, and I gave that five stars. And for a retelling, I gave this one, which I think I'm going to give four stars. I did really, really like it, but I don't love it as much as I thought I did. But I still, it's still really good. And like, the message is incredible and everything. It just got some of the things I was just like, oh, that's really convenient. I also just finished Suddenly You by Lisa Claypass. I was kind of singing its praise yesterday. Ooh, I don't know. I really, really didn't like like the last hour to two hours. I wish it had just either ended or had like changed the ending a little bit and made it shorter because I really didn't need any of that. It just felt so like 
inorganic to the story and I know I know it's like a romance and you're supposed to be like glad when they get married and stuff like that but like neither of these characters have wanted marriage and I kind of would have liked if they hadn't gotten married and also even if they did get married I hate that he does like a complete like 180 at the end he's like no I hate kids I do not want children and he's like yeah I want kids yay this is great and I was like what no so I I would I just would appreciate if this romance just the last like two hours didn't exist of it that would be perfect so I I don't know I would have given it four stars up until that last bit and then some stuff happened right at the very end that made me really blah. so three stars. I did really enjoy it. I was honestly kind of sick of historical romance where it's just like everyone's a duke or an earl or whatever and I would just like prefer some more like working men and working women and that's what this is. She she is like part of the lower gentry but she but she is an author and that's like what she's really well known for and so she's like part of this lower part of society that's still like fair it's still like wealthy but they're not the gentry and I think that's really interesting that's more of like along the lines of like Pride and Prejudice like a Mr. Darcy or something like that where it's like still like that class of people that are wealthy or independently wealthy but they're not he's not like Duke Darcy so yeah anyway I, I appreciate that he is the son of a duke though of course or some kind of gentry he is but he's like a bastard so it doesn't really count I would have preferred if he just wasn't that at all I don't know I just feel like a lot of the things in this book were like surface level where it's like if it had been done a little differently or a little better in certain ways it could have been amazing but just some things were wrong and mm, I don't know I still did really end up enjoying this one though so three stars and this counted for my A in arithmetic which is to read a book at least 300 pages long so Good. I've gotten two more newts, which is really nice, and one of them was my first O, which is great, even though it's the 13th. I should have more O's by now, but I don't. So I think I'm actually, ooh, I didn't, I didn't print out a new one from work. I really want to, but I think I'm going to, like, fill this in because I'm kind of behind on filling it in. I'll fill it in and count how many books I finished and think about my TBRs more, and while I do that... I'm going to listen to, um, I don't know, either the Raven Boys or my last story in Summer Days and Summer Nights. So this means that so far I have an A in Ancient Runes, an A in Arithmancy, an A and an E in Astronomy, an A and an E in Care of Magical Creatures. I have an O in Muggle Studies, and then an E in Herbology. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 on day 13. Not bad and that's 13 books completed because I also have those two hanging out down there could be better could be worse but I do have to say I mean yes I have been reading quite a bit of like my like manga and like my shorter books but I also have now completed well once I finish summer days and summer nights I will have completed two of my three longest books on my TBR for the month. The other one is Spinning Silver. So those two were really long, which I was wondering how they'd fit in. And then also like books that are like 13 hours long are also some of the longest ones on my TBR. So like A Duke by Default was 13 and Born to be Wild I think was 13. So there are a few more that, actually I think Born to be Wild was only 10, so ignore me. But I don't know I feel like I'm not doing great but I'm doing like well enough like I'm still could complete all of them at this point I just really have to try hard at it Ooh, I also forgot to fill in this one <laughs> let's see
That's quite the rainbow going on there. <laughs> All right, so it is now um, 8 p.m. and I just finished uh, Summer Days and Summer Nights. So the final story in this collection was by Lev Grossman and it was the map of Tiny Perfect Things. And I really liked it, but there was like this one thing that happened like right at the end that I was just like, okay, that's really dumb. So it's like a Groundhog Day-esque situation where he's like repeating the same day over and over and over. And I really liked his character. His his idea of what the perfect thing to do is, is he just goes to the library every day and is working his way through the whole science fiction and fantasy section, which like goals. And I don't know, it was, it was really cute. And I, I did like it a lot. It was just like that one thing at the end I didn't like. Um, I haven't read anything else by Love Grossman though, but this made me excited to read The Magicians finally. That really needs to happen. I really need to read The Magicians. I don't know if I'll love it. I don't know if I'll like it or not, but I need to do it anyway. So that's, that's another book done for the newts. Good job me. And that counts for a book with a cover that charmed you. Let's see which is an E in charm, so it means nothing <laughs> since I don't have my A yet. Oh well, let's see if I can finish another book tonight. And I just added up all my star ratings of all the stories. Some of them I was like, wait, what was that story about? So I think I'm gonna need to watch the vlog when it comes out, my second vlog, and like double check what I rated a few stories because I can't remember for some of them which I guess shows that they didn't like leave a huge mark on me. I don't know. Anyways, I, some of those stories I really, really liked, some of them I didn't. Anyway, I added it up and then I divided it by 10. I didn't count the two that I DNF'd and it has a 3.1. So I think it's justified and I need to buy the UK copy now. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch the vlog from day one. I talk about it at the end, but I have a really beautiful copy of the other anthology in this like, collection my true love gave to me and this one i really want to buy in that beautiful edition as well but i was like i don't know if i can justify it i think i can and i enjoyed enough of the stories that i genuinely feel like i want to go reread these because i really liked them so i might just have to buy it but yeah my average was a 3.1 and i said if it was higher than a three then i could buy it so boom <laughs> All right, so it is now 9.15 and I just finished my fourth book for the day, so I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, so I just finished The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. This accounted for about over 350 pages, which is, num which is my O in potions, which I do not have my A or my E, so it doesn't count. Anyway, that's what I originally accounted for it. Originally, I put it as an author that's new to me. Like, right before Newt started, I realized, like, literally the day before Newt started, I was like, I've already read a book by Maggie Steve Otter. So I had to, like, frantically change my TBR around a little bit and be like, oh, no. So I changed it to this one instead. I think it's, like, around 400 pages, either just over or just under. So definitely counts more than 350. But I was like, oh, yeah, I read Shiver, like, five years ago at this point. I didn't talk about it, but July 31st was my five year booktube anniversary, which is crazy to me. I can't believe it's been five years. Like I have not been consistent at all whatsoever. I'm like the least consistent booktuber ever. But I started five years ago and I, I remember like the real thing that like kicked me off to start doing booktube videos was Prue's project. So thanks Reagan. And that was like the main thing. I was like, if she can do it, like, and I like remember watching her, like she had just started a few months before me and I was watching like her book Tubathon vlog and stuff like that and wrap up and like her, I think she did daily updates potentially or every other day. And I remember watching that and being like, I want to do this. And I'd watched like Catty Tastic before that and um Padfoot and Prongs and I'd like watched other people but like watching Prue's project on her 
OG channel before she changed it to her new Peru's Project channel. Do you, any of you remember that where she had to like change it because of the name or something? So she had like her old channel. I remember watching her videos and being like, she just started and she's great and reads cool books. I can do it too. And then I did and I was horrible and I think all those videos are private. <laughs> anyway. Woo! I, so I did end up, I think, that September, right after I started. I read Shiver, and I think I gave it three stars. It, it was probably more like a two star. It was okay. I didn't like it very much, though, and I totally forgot. And this is, like, a major step up, in my opinion. I liked it quite a bit. I don't know. I felt... It felt really strange reading it because... I felt almost like disconnected from it the whole time, but I still really enjoyed it. So I think I'm going to give it like a 3.5. I definitely am interested in continuing on to the series um, somewhat soon. I think I'm going to dedicate all of September to reading sequels for the most part. There's a couple other books that I may get to here or there, but for the most part I would like to like finish like three sequels a week or something along those lines depending some of them are really long like I need to read the next like Game of Thrones book I need to read the next book and um the Assassin's Apprentice what is it called Farseer trilogy I need to read the like Royal Assassin I need to read some like quite a bit longer books and like the next book and the Diviner series Lair of Dreams and it's like some like 500 600 700 a thousand page books and that's like gonna be my goal for September is just try to get through as many sequels as I can and I don't think I'll read the next sequel then because I want to get through some of like my sequels that I haven't read the, a book in that series for a while but I would like to continue on with this at least by the end of the year I think anyway I finished another book woo so that I'm really happy about it and now I'm not sure what to listen to so actually I did end up start starting um, Sparkle Witch by Helen Harper this is the 3.5 and a Lazy Girl's Guide to Magic series which initially I had this on my TBR for a book with the stars on the cover because there's quite a few stars on the cover um initially that's what I had this on my TBR for and then instead I ended up reading Baker's Magic and listening to that but I physically started reading this at work today I started reading it like on the computer while I was on the register I don't know if I'm technically supposed to do that but whatever it's fine I'm 15% of the way through it and I figured I need something physical to read when I'm up on register and since I have like you know, two weeks left in the month, I might as well, like, utilize some of that time, so I kind of want to continue on with it right now, but I'm gonna save it. I don't think I'm on register tomorrow at all, or the next day, or the next day? I don't think I'm on register all this week. Maybe one day, but I'm not, I'm not supposed to be on register Saturday either, so maybe I will actually physically read this sometime this week, but... I figured I could read it for a book with magic in it, but I could read it for quite a few things, I think. So the reason I would like to read this for a book that has magic in it, which is my A, is because I just read my E, which is a cover that charmed you, which I did um, Summer Days and Summer Nights for. So anyway, I'm having really fun, a lot of fun with this, but I don't know how like interesting it is to you guys, uh, especially without like a visual reference, but... I'm having a good time. Anyway, I don't know if I'll continue on with this right now. I kind of do want to listen to something so I can like do something else, but I'm I'm really quite happy with the Raven Boys and I think Chris said that one of them, like two or three, I think he said is his favorite. He can't remember which one in that series is his favorite, so I'm excited to continue on with them. <sighs> and every time I walk by that little that little Alice village thing it makes me so happy it's so cute look at it look at it look at it look at it anyway I did tell you guys a few days ago it might have been in the last vlog I don't remember when but I did tell you guys a few days ago that I um I grabbed the wrong notebook that I was trying to start reading them in order after this now that I've finished like all these library books and nothing's really due so I did write out the books in order 
and of like order of when I want to complete them for the most part it's like a rough draft I just kind of like did it off the top of my head so I think I'm gonna go through this like straighten out a few things straighten out a few things um but I'm listening to Spinning Silver on my old phone so on my new phone I need to start something new um and I think maybe maybe I don't know I'll either start Landline or Blame It on the Duke. I think I might start Landline because I think I'm going to hate Blame It on the Duke. And I think I might save that one for Friday so I can listen to it all just like in one shot. I don't know. Maybe I'll change Blame It on the Duke to something else because I'm really dreading reading it. Oh, I might have to rearrange my TBR again. Anyway, I'll start something and rearrange stuff and be sad. <laughs> So all of this is accurate, except for this one. This one, I don't know. I was figuring out how I still wanted to do this. But this is what it looks like if you want to see a representation. So I have an A in this one, an A in this one, an E in this, E, and then an O, and then an E. And that's what I'm at so far. And this one doesn't count at all. So I don't know. It is, it is okay, but this is, I don't know how well you'll be able to see the screen, but I just rearranged a ton of stuff on my TBR. So I think what I've decided to do is just completely take that book off my TBR. Which book is it? I'm going to completely take Blame It on the Duke off my TBR because I'm not feeling it. The only reason it's on my TBR is for the book bingo to read a Rita 2018 finalist. And so instead, I've decided to go with Tell Me by Abigail Strom. And yeah, this was a finalist. Whatever, it's fine. I'll just read this instead. So that makes me feel much better because I was dreading reading that. So then instead, I decided to do, this is my spreadsheet in case you haven't seen it yet. Instead, for the last book in a series, I decided to put Ghost in the Big Brass Bed by Bruce Covo, which makes me really happy because I was felt like I wasn't be able to wasn't going to be able to squeeze this one in, and now I will, and I'm really happy about it. And I have to read it soon because it's gonna be an A, and I need to get that O because I have to get it. So anyway, that's good. I'm not sure if I'm gonna read extra books to fit in as one of these two. But then I also rearranged a book with magic in it is now a wizard named Nell. This may get switched out for the one that I'm currently reading, Sparkle Witch, just depending. Although I could do Sparkle Witch for the book in the last series as well. One of these might get switched out, who knows. And then a book that you think will leave a mark. I just put Yotsuba Volume 9 because I love this series and it seriously, I think, is one of my favorite series ever period so I'm really really enjoying that so I figured I'd put that one in there that would give me another like easy book so all of those got rearranged I'm really glad I was able to figure out a way for this all to work and I started landline so that one's highlighted and then a color in the title so I've, I'm reading two that are A's which I need to do so I can get those E's and then those O's, which I already have done. So I think I'm going to really try to focus on getting my, my A's in every subject and then my E's and then get all those O's. It's a plan and I'm sticking with it. And so that means so far I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Holy cow! I have 17 and it is only the 13th. But... Two of those are DNFs, and if I have time at the end of the month, I will retake those subjects, just because I feel like I'm sort of cheating. But yeah, anyway, I ended up fitting in Tell Me 
for a book from an author you haven't read anything before, and I bumped Rappuccini's Daughter Out by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Like, I really want to get to it, but I have to get to Tell Me. I have to, because it's, it's part of my book bingos. So, anyway, in case you didn't know, these are my book bingos. I don't have them, I haven't crossed them off at all. I should probably do that. Let's do that right now, actually. Why not? Alright, so as you can see, these are my two different book bingos. This is the Ripped Bodice book bingo. And this is like the booktube summer romance book bingo, which is hosted by Sarah and Sissy. Go check them out. Um, anyway, you can see in this one that I have everything but three. So I'm missing five bingos, I guess. I, I need to get five more, but I only have missing three tiles. And then this one, I don't have nearly as many bingos as I would like. So I'm missing quite a few. I only have one, two, three, four. I believe I only have four, which is not great at all. Anyway, I'm only missing five out of these, though. So that will be really easy. Firefighters, mermaids, hero de describes the heroine's eyes using the ocean. <laughs> Queer, historical, and time travel, which I've just started on my time travel, and I've also just started on my one-word trout one word title. So these two will be knocked out probably tomorrow or the next day, which is awesome. Anyway, that's what they look like, and I'm quite happy with my progress. I knew that I'd be, I knew that a lot of these I couldn't use for the owls back in July when I did them, so I saved, like, all of these books that I knew I needed to get done for these for August, and I, I can easily do it, but this one, the category, and the mermaid, that's the same book. The Rita finalist is a stand is like disconnected, and then these two are the same, and then I have to get to those three. It's totally doable. Don't doubt me. It is now 11.30 and Christopher has just come to bed. I'm going to go sleep as well because we're really tired. Give me my book. And I've started reading Landline by Rainbow Rowell. So this is a reread for me. This was on my list of books to, re to read this year because I wanted to reread it and see if I still love it because I want to go and reread all my old favorite books, all my five-star books on my channel and see if I still love and recommend them and so far I'm further than I think where that is so just a little bit I'm really enjoying it I'm almost two hours into the audiobook so I crossed it off as two hours because I know I will be able to listen to just a little bit more before I go to bed I'm really really enjoying it a lot I was I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it just because I don't know I don't know for some reason I'm like doubting my own taste but I'm really, really enjoying it so far. And I'm just, oh, I'm so excited for, like, the m stuff to actually start happening. The phone stuff. I'm so excited. So this is going to be a lot of fun over the next few days. I can tell. So I'm really enjoying that. And with that, I can tell you that if I finish, like, the last, like, whatever, uh, like, 10, 15 minutes that I have to go to get to the two-hour mark... I will have read 11 hours today, which my goal is 7, so I killed it, and I finished 4 books, so I'm about the most accomplished person ever. I'm really proud of myself, so I have 11 newts at this point, and I'm, I'm quite happy with that, I've decided. But you guys will not believe the amount of books I'm going to be able to read this week, I'm going to try so hard. Anyway. I'm going to go to bed now, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Alright, so it is Tuesday night now. It was a really weird Tuesday. 
I don't know. I did end up being on register today, which I wasn't sure if I was going to be, but I'm definitely not tomorrow, the next day, or Saturday. I checked, so like unless something changes last minute, if somebody calls out or whatever. So I did end up reading a little bit more of Sparkle Witch. I don't know. I'm a little past the 50% mark. I could have read more and I just am not really liking it. I don't know. I may DNF. I may not even count this for the readathon at all. I just, I'm not feeling it. It just, it feels like it's trying really hard and it's way too short to mean anything and I just don't like it. So I may leave it where it is. I'll have to think about it. But in good news, I'm still reading Landline by Rainbow Rowell. I just passed like the 50% mark. I'm really, really, really enjoying this. I was like so afraid that I wouldn't love it because I loved it so much before. I figured, I was like afraid that I wouldn't love it this time, but I, I really, really, really am. I don't know. I just, I instantly got like sucked in and I know what's going to happen. And I'm so fascinated and I, she's really good at writing conversations. If nothing else, Rainbow Rowell can write excellent conversation and I'm just having such a blast with it. I'm enjoying it enough that I think I'm going to ask to have it brought back into the bookstore. We haven't had it in the bookstore for a while since it came out. I think 2015 after the paperback came out. I think is the last time we've had it in the bookstore and I think I'm going to ask her to bring back in a copy maybe in like October so then I can recommend it during Christmas time since it's set during Christmas. Anyway, I'm really liking this and I'm super excited. I think I'm going to try to finish it up tonight because I don't want to put it down and then I need to keep reading Spinning Silver but I've gotten distracted. But that's it so far. Christopher is making dinner right now. I'm going to go help him and uh, it is... It is 6.15 and we just got home like maybe 10 minutes ago. So then we'll eat dinner and then I'll keep reading and it's gonna be glorious. All right, so it is now 9.30, exactly. And I just finished listening to Landline by Rainbow Rowell and I loved it. I just, oh my gosh. <laughs> I really, really adored it. Man, I have good taste. I've. Yeah, I was, I was really paranoid about not liking it, but I really, really enjoyed it. Which makes me excited to go and read Attachments now, because I'm even, I was even more worried about whether or not I would still like Attachments than I would Landline. And I really hope I love it just as much as I did the first time, because I loved Attachments when I read it even more than Landline. Anyway, I'm just funny, because I don't really like fangirl that much and I've never read Eleanor and Park but I love her adult novels anyway I feel kind of emotionally drained now I didn't sob but I did tear up a bit I don't know I just I feel like it's one of those stories that like I definitely don't like relate to it but I really enjoy it, and I mean, I'm saying I don't relate to it, like, her relationship with her husband is, like, insane to me, like, it just doesn't make sense for me in my life, like, Christopher and my relationship is so different than their relationship, even though they have, like, a really loving relationship, and so it's, like, weird because I, I don't relate to it in that sense, and I know it would, like, never work for me. But I still really, really enjoyed it. And, like, obviously you can enjoy books without, like, personally relating to them. But it's just weird. I don't know. I'm kind of, like I said, like, drained. Because this was, like, so... And it's such an emotional book. I mean, it's so short. It's like 300 pages, less than 300 pages. And I just, okay, it's just over 300 pages. 308 pages. And I just got immediately sucked in and just like couldn't put it down from like the second I picked it up. 
which I feel like is how I felt about both attachments and online when I originally read them. And, I don't know, I just, I'm so glad I reread this. I've been wanting to reread it for a while, and I'm just glad I finally made the time to do it. So, this book is amazing, it's going to stay with me forever, and I'm not sure how I fall on it. I think it's still like a 4.5, like I originally gave it. I think I'm going to keep it rounded up to a 5, but I think it's still just like maybe not quite there for whatever reason, but it was great. But now I'm not sure what to do. I don't know if I want to like, I don't know. I think I'm too like, like I said, like drained to read Spinning Silver. Like I'm really enjoying Spinning Silver and I don't want to like miss any of it. And so I think instead of re continuing on in Spinning Silver, like, I'll try to do that tomorrow or the next day. I think I'll just start so another, like, romance, like, another fast romance and just try to get, like, power through a little bit more of that tonight to try to make it so I'll be able to finish another book tomorrow and continue on with this, like, book-a-day train. But I'm so glad I read this. And my sister's reading it right now, so I'm excited to see what she thinks. And then as far as, as, far as Spinning Silver goes, uh, there's a girl at my work um, who... I was, like, talking to her about Spinning Silver a little bit, and, like, weeks ago before I started it, and she was like, that sounds so good. And so, she kept asking me if I'd started it yet, and so I finally started it, so I told her that I started it, and she was like, oh, I really want to read it, and I was like, you should read it. She's like, I don't have time to read it, I need to go, she's like, I'm going back to school in a couple weeks, I'm like, no, you need to read it. And so, I handed it to her while she was on register and she said she like read 50 pages when she was up at register last night and we were talking about it today and she's just a little bit further behind than me so I think she's gonna keep reading it and maybe it'll be like a somewhat buddy read but she it's like really interesting talking to her about it because she's Jewish herself and she knows like a lot more about Jewish history than I do and Miriam in Spinning Silver is a Jew and a money lender and that's like what her family profession is and stuff and so like we were talking about it today and it was really interesting and she she's Jewish she's Islamic and yeah she she has a lot of like Polish family members as well she's like also Polish and so she like knew what a lot of like the words in the book meant as well so we we're like opening it up and she like opened it up so we were, like, when we were flipping through it together, like, a lot of the words that I didn't recognize, like, either of, like, food or places or whatever, she was like, oh, yeah, this, and oh, that, yeah, that. It's, like, hasn't given me enough clues yet for time period and setting quite. It does have a lot of, like, Soviet Union stuff, and I'm not sure, like, where, because it's definitely, like, pre, like, UK, Ukraine breaking off and stuff. So anyway, it's just, like, it was really interesting talking to her about it, and it makes me even more excited to continue on with it. So I don't know when she'll be able to continue on with it next, but hopefully we can stay on, like, a somewhat even pace. I think that'd be really interesting, although I'll probably finish before her because she's really busy and I'm just reading books every day. <laughs> a.m. Chris and I have been really bad about staying up fairly late recently. He's editing my vlog right now because he is a saint and I don't know. I've gone on there several times and asked him to please come to bed and not stay up forever and he's like no it's okay I'll just work on it for a little longer. Ugh, he's gonna be up forever. I know he's not finishing it tonight he's just trying to like place all the clips but it's already an hour and a half and it's probably going to be close to two hours if not longer. Sorry guys hope you enjoyed it. So that's what Chris is doing. I have been listening to Tell Me by Abigail Strom. I don't know for some reason they make the cover really small on here but that's what it looks like. And this is what am I reading this book for? It's for the last one. So a new to me author, which would give me, which would mean if I read this, I'll get my E in Transfiguration, which will also give me my O because I've already read my book for that. So I don't know. I'm, I feel very up in the air about it right now. I, 
I think I'm a little over halfway through, but I'm not sure how far because Scribd is dumb and doesn't tell you, the, like, the hour or the percentage. It only gives you the chapters, which is frustrating. It really annoys me because I like to track my reading. Anyway, um, I'm 30, I'm on chapter 31 out of 44. Some of the things are making me really, the whole book is just making me really sad. So, basically it starts off with this girl and, like, her sister's best friend. And he, like, is in her the bookstore that she owns, like, annoying her, essentially. Her sister and her best friend own, like, a company together, like, a business together where they, like, take people on, like, hiking expeditions all over and stuff. And so that's what they do. And they're constantly, like, mountain climbing and hiking and adventuring and stuff like this. And... So they're barely ever home, but she lives in New York, the main character does. So her, sis her sister and her best friend, her sister best friend, are in the city. He's in the bookstore, like, irritating her. And then she ends up, like, meeting a guy in her bookstore who is, like, the epitome of, like, her ideal man. And so the, and the guy... Her best, the best friend, Caleb, is, like, instantly, like, super, like, defensive, like, and, like, really doesn't like him. And he's, like, oh, uh, he's a nerd, da, da, da. So he's, like, already, like, saying, he's, like, ragging on this guy for liking books and ragging on her for liking books and ragging on him for, like, wearing glasses. He's literally, like, calls him, like, horn rim because he wears horn rim glasses and, like, this guy is, like, a, a prick. And then... He, her sister, like, ends up coming in, and the guy who was, like, showing interest in the main character instantly was, like, <gasps> sister, and gloms onto her, and, like, instantly becomes, like, super attracted to her and stuff. And so, there's, like, a bit of, like, a love triangle thing, except for the sister, like, doesn't even care about this guy and stuff, and I don't know. Anyway, some of it's hitting, like, a little close to home, because, although... All my past boyfriends were really wonderful guys. Like, they were just good, good men. None of them were readers. None of them were readers. Like, one was, like, a tiny bit. And then, like, the rest weren't at all. And I, like, never realized, like, how sad it made me. Until, like, I met Christopher and... Our love of books is like what brought us together and what really made us click and so she's like talking about this guy and obviously it's like the best friend that is like the love interest and not this other guy who's like fickle and dumb and I don't know like why would you want to be with someone who's like so easily swayed by someone's looks he's like wow your sister's so beautiful can you hook us up she was like ew no <laughs> anyway it just like it almost makes me, like, depressed for her. I'm like, ew, I don't want you to end up with this person because just thinking about, like, how sad I know I personally would have been in that situation at, and, like, how sad it did end up making me that nobody, like, had this, like, love of reading with me. Like, he literally makes fun of it and is like, ew, you read, ew, that's, like, stupid, blah, blah, blah. And I've had boyfriends do that to me before that they like made fun of me for reading books and I'm sure they weren't trying to be like mean and stuff but like watching him do it to her is really frustrating. We did just get to a part in the bo book though where she's making him listen to an audiobook with her and he is enjoying it But, like, it took a lot for them to get there and for her to be like, come on, just give it a try. Like, stop being an a-hole about this. Editing Giselle popping in here really quickly. I'm proof-watching it. And I realized I forgot to mention that as they're, like, listening to it, I think when they finish listening to Anna Green Gables, she
she mentions that there's multiple books in this series and he essentially says like ew, I'm not going to read them, that's so dumb, blah, blah, blah. So even though he really likes Anna Green Gables, he's not even, like, willing to try more books in the series. How is this character supposed to be likable again? I don't know, but that also really irritated me. Like, he's so stuck up his own butt and, like, won't even consider stepping outside of his, like, realm of what's comfortable. <laughs> anyway. So, like, some of it is, like hitting a little close to home where I'm like, I feel so sad for her for like being attracted to this guy that I don't feel like is going to make her happy because I know personally he wouldn't have made me happy. If that makes sense. He's like very outdoorsy and stuff like that. And I feel like that's how all my exes were and stuff. So anyway, he's just not super likable in my opinion. And then like this major plot twist happened that I didn't see coming at all and was totally out of the blue and really made me sad. And now I'm just like, what is going on in this book? Like, uh, I don't know. I'll finish it. I don't think I like it though, but I'm not sure. It does have a very strong, I don't want to spoil it in case you want to read it, but there is, like, a bit of a tie to Anna Green Gables in it. And that's definitely the, the thing that I'm enjoying the most right now. That The book that she does end up making him listen to is Anna Green Gables. And his reaction to it and stuff was, like, making me tear up. I'm like, yes, I love Anna Green Gables so much. And spoiler alert, she's going to Prince Edward Island. I'm really jealous. I should go to Prince Edward. Island. I'm only like what like six seven hours from Prince Edward Island. I could totally go there. I should do that. I should make Chris listen to Anna Green Gables and then we can go to Prince Edward Island. <laughs> but like that's not really what I'm enjoying the most but I don't know. I just feel like so like sad reading this book. It's not really bringing me joy at all. But I think I really am gonna try to fall asleep. I'm gonna like stop listening to it. Try to fall asleep finish it tomorrow and hopefully read something more uplifting later. All right, so we just got back from work literally like two minutes ago. It's 620 and I just finished listening to Tell Me by Abigail Strom. It's so small. It's so stupid. Anyway, I finished listening to this. <sighs> I was not a fan. I just finished it up um, waiting for Chris to come pick me up from work. So it was like perfect timing because as soon as he got to work and said like, hey, I'm here and messaged me, I finished it like right then. So that was perfect timing, but I really, really did not enjoy this book. I think if I wasn't me, I would give it two stars for how it was. I just didn't like the way the story progressed and I thought they tried to fit a lot into such a small book. Things weren't developed very well and the ending was horrifically stupid. <sighs> but a personal enjoyment level is... Here, I pulled it up on Goodreads so you can see the cover a little bit better. Personal story... Personal... My personal enjoyment level though is one star. So I'm gonna give it one star because I really, really, really just hated it. They were like... A couple things I like. Don't read this if you don't want to be spoiled on the entire Anna Green Gable series, by the way. And especially not the first book. Yeah, she kind of spoils a lot of stuff in it, just kind of all of a sudden. And, I don't know, I really did not care for it. It was... I just thought both the characters were so stupid, and... I especially didn't like him. There is a part at the end where they're trying to see if they can like make a relationship work between them and he like travels all over for his work and has like breaks in between and she owns and runs and manages her own bookstore and like the way they described the bookstore as well she like was the main person in the bookstore i mean in the bookstore that i work in where a lot of people don't work in and there are a lot of full-time people well a handful of full-time people there was like 15 people on the schedule at least 
and who were working every single week and it seemed like it was her and just two employees running the whole store all the time which I don't know how they do it I don't know who receives the books it just working in a bookstore I didn't feel like her bookstore was believable but besides the point she like is running the whole thing by herself she opens it every day by herself and usually closes it there's only apparently one set of keys and she'll like give it to the employees if they need to close so I don't know how she gets it back to open some of the things just weren't very well thought out especially like personally working in a bookstore and our bookstore is I mean it's it's large but it's a small independent bookstore like it's we do have a pretty wide selection but even we don't have everything and I don't know it was just I really didn't believe that you could run this bookstore in New York City with just three people and apparently no book receiver and she's like so absent-minded and she's not even like strict on her own hours and stuff she kind of just does whatever she wants it just didn't none of it made sense to me anyway besides the point there is a point later in the book where he asks her essentially to like get up her job get a manager over the store and just come travel with him which I thought was incredibly arrogant and stupid and selfish of him and she's like no I can't do that but like what if whenever you aren't traveling all over and stuff, you come back to New York and this will be like your home base? And he's like, no, I could never do that. I have to live where I'm like working and stuff, even in like the in-between places and blah, blah, blah. And like, he's like, how could you ask me to do that? And I was like, whoa, dude, you have issues. Like if you cannot see, it just seemed to make, it just didn't make any sense. Like how could he not see that the person who has like a steady job and like owns a business that is in a location can't just like get up and leave for the whole year and just get a manager over it where he's very flexible and he can go wherever he wants like over the whole world like it just I really hated him I didn't like her I didn't like the story I didn't like the situation I didn't like anything about this book Except for maybe Anna Green Gables, but that annoys me because they, like, spoiled everything. So if you hadn't read it, and you were planning on reading it, but you read this first, you know exactly what happens through the whole series. And it's dumb. So I'm really not feeling it, and yeah, what, one star. I don't know. I just... The thing that, like, pushed me over the edge, though, was really just him. He was the worst. But we can mark that as red, and now I have an O in Transfiguration, which is awesome. So Landline got my A, this one got my E, and then I already had my O for um, the Alyssa Cole book, A Duke by Default. So I'm set on that. So now I have two O's. So I'll have to figure out what like comes next in my situation and read that. So instead of reading for the past hour and a bit, let's see, it's 8.30 now. Instead of reading, I've been, <laughs> I've been watching um, Lindsay Ellis. Uh, she is a favorite YouTuber of mine. She does like video essays and like about film and things and I really really like her a lot and <laughs> she did a Q&A so I was watching that and I didn't realize that she was working with PBS on The Great American Read which <sighs> I don't know I think the I think PBS calling it The Great American Read is a misnomer because a lot of the books are in American like America's Favorite Read, that would be fine, or something along those lines, but calling it an American read makes me think that the books are American, and mo a lot of them aren't. So besides that, though, uh, 
I I didn't realize she was working with them though and we have like a table set up at the bookstore with those books on them and a lot of people have been talking to me about them and stuff but I didn't realize that she was doing a video series with them so I watched that whole series there's like five or six videos and they were very interesting and I like her a lot and I like I like her voice explaining things like if she was talking and someone else was talking and saying the exact same things like I just like how she does it and she like co-wrote them and you can like definitely hear her like style in them so if you want to watch those I recommend. The series that she ended up doing with PBS was called It's Lit <laughs> and then I also watched her Q&A that she just posted because um, she posted it today and yeah now I'm gonna probably I don't know I should really try to work on like some of the little organization projects that I have going on in here. We'll see though. I still haven't decided what to read next. I've listened to like maybe half an hour of Spinning Silver but I just don't think I'm in the mood for it right now. I was able to get a different copy from another library so it won't expire in five days. I actually have two more weeks with it so I don't have to like worry about like rushing through it in a few days. But now that I've done that I'm like oh I can stretch it out for even longer. I don't know. I do, I think I know what I want to read t tomorrow so I can finish another book up tomorrow. But I've already completed my book for the day so I'm like just kind of playing around on YouTube and being completely unproductive. While Christopher's out there working really hard editing my video, I'm just in here being a bum. I'm the worst. <laughs> Alright, so it is 11.30 now. Christopher is still working on the vlog because he's utterly amazing. I'm a slug. I literally haven't moved from bed except for to eat food and go to the bathroom and go in and give Chris, Chris kisses of encouragement and say thank you a million times. Uh, he's the best. You're the best, babe. I love you. <laughs> he says that he's enjoyed working on it, though, so that makes me feel somewhat better. I'm sorry it's so long, though, but he, he said that it's really funny, so I'm excited to watch it. Like, what he's done with the editing and stuff. Anyway, I decided to start The Highwaymen. This is by... This is a horrible cover. The other cover's better. This is by Kerrigan... How do you say that? The Highwaymen by Kerrigan Byrne. This is a book that I've been meaning to get to for a while and I've heard really good things about and I'm actually really enjoying it so far. It starts off with this this little boy and this little girl and it's it's like a very like childlike love and it's really like sweet yet depressing because they're in a horrible situation and and then something ends up happening and he ends up getting like taken away and so then, like, it flash forwards, like, 17 years or something. She's quite a bit older now, and she's alone, and, and she's, like, working for Scotland Yard. So she's an awesome work working woman. Uh, she's all alone because he died. And I'm really enjoying it so far. That's just kind of, like, the start of it, but I feel like a lot has already happened, and I'm, I'm really liking it. I'm excited. I've gotten really sucked in, and I didn't expect that. So I'm three hours through that now. And I'm going to try to go to sleep now so that I can function tomorrow, but ooh, I finished another book today, so that's at least good. Again. Flashback to Christopher exactly like one week ago saying, I swear we make more interesting food than this. We did, I've made <laughs> plenty of more interesting food that we just haven't shown. But I know. Yeah. I'm only teasing, but I just think it's really funny. I'm currently like proof watching the vlog. The two hour long one? Yeah, so this is vlog three right now that we're in. I'm watching the 
vlog number two and it's really long. I'm currently watching it and that's literally the scene I just watched was us making this food. And, oh, really? and Chris saying, we make more interesting food than this. Whatever, I think it's I, delicious. I finished editing that vlog last night, so. Yeah, he was up to like past midnight editing it for me because he's amazing. So it was such a nice thing to wake up to this morning. I didn't vlog me watching it at all though because I was trying to get through as much as possible because it's two freaking hours. But I'm now like an hour and 20 minutes through. Uh, it's now like 8 p.m. And we got back from work really late ah, because, Chris, because Chris has like a deadline coming up that he needs to like get all these things edited for. So unfortunately, it means we're coming home a little bit later. And unfortunately, that means that he's going to be at work a long time tomorrow. I mean, it sucks, but... He, at least he likes his job, so that's a plus. Anyway, as far as a reading update goes, I am... It is the next day, by the way. It's Thursday. It's the 16th. And we've passed the halfway mark, which is crazy. But since I'm... I think I'm at, like, 18 books completed, I'm, like, pretty well on track, so I'm not, not too fussed. Anyway... I've listened to like three more hours of The Highwaymen. Um, I was able to listen to it while um, waiting for Chris to come pick me up from work. We, I actually went to the store while he was in, when he was still at work. I went to Marshall's and I actually bought a few shirts. So I guess I can do a haul once we're done eating because I'm really happy. I was... We went to the store, I looked when we were out on Sunday, and I looked to see, I really want some more shirts that I can wear with all my high-waisted skirts. So I want like a crop top, but not super short, like I just want like something where we'll go just like a little bit past where my skirt is, kind of like with this shirt today, where my shirt ends right here and my crop top's right there, and I, I wanted more of those, and I bought this one at Marshall's, and I couldn't find ones that I liked at other stores and they felt really cheap and they were like super sheer and all this stuff so I went and I literally bought like the same this same shirt but in like three different colors four different colors four different colors so now I have five of this like exact shirt which I'm really happy about and I found a few other really cute things so maybe maybe tomorrow i think i'll show tomorrow yeah tomorrow i'll do a little like try on haul i think that will be fun um but tonight i don't think i'll hit my goal today for the reading wise and i think i missed my goal yesterday by like one hour but i don't think i'll hit it today because after we're done eating i need to, need to finish the vlog and then i need to go through it for thumbnails and then I, my book club meeting over skype is with my sisters tonight so then we have that um, at 9.30. So it's only an hour and a half until then. So I might squeeze in a tiny bit more reading in between then, now and then, but most likely not. So anyway, it's going to be a busy night. So I have a quick story time for you. So basically today is my birthday, but I don't really recognize my birthday. I don't know. It's not that... I don't think other people should celebrate their birthdays. I just don't like announcing to the world when it's mine. But I'm doing it today for a specific reason. I wasn't even going to mention that it was my birthday. But something happened today at work that kind of inspired me to. So basically the reason why I don't like telling people it's my birthday and I don't like sharing that fact is that I just really hate like insincere forms of birthday wishes and like basically I don't want people talking to me exclusively for the reason that it's my birthday. I just think that's stupid and it really annoys me. So like on Facebook I don't want my birthday on there because then I'm gonna get like messages from people I haven't talked to in 10 years going oh happy birthday Giselle and I'm like I don't care about you at all and you don't care about me at all. Why are you talking to me? And that's basically why I don't. So it's like if somebody knows it's my birthday and is like sincerely wishing me a happy birthday and like sincerely cares about me, then it's like a different story and I'll like suck it up. I still don't like getting presents, but like I'll, I'll suck it up and I'll like deal with it and because I know they mean well. 
but that's basically why I don't do that. I think it's so asinine. So anyway, that's basically why I don't. But something happened today at work. So I didn't tell any of my coworkers it was my birthday because um, I just didn't want a big deal made out of it at all. But then one of my coworkers, we got something in the back today um, in, in freight. It's like a gift store and a bookstore. We got something in today and she... I saw it and I gasped and she was on the phone and she turned to me and she was like talking to someone like ordering more gifts and stuff and she like turned to me and she was like was it that was that why you were gasping and I was like yes and she was like I'll buy you one and I was like what no you don't have to buy me one she's like yeah I'll buy you one and I was like no really and she's like ah she's like you better go pick one out she's like oh, I'm gonna go over and choose one for you and you're not gonna like it and I was like okay and so I ended up picking one out and then as soon as she like got off the phone she ended up buying me one and it was really really cute of her and so then I was like oh this is kind of perfect timing because it's my birthday and she was like oh my gosh you didn't even tell me and so it's like it like changed it like kind of turned it on his head that she was like buying me something anyway and then found out it was my birthday I just thought it was funny and it was like it kind of like flipped that thing on its head where it's like I don't want to tell people it's my birthday if I'm getting insincere like presents or wishes or whatever but she was so cute so I picked one out for myself and I picked one out for Christopher too and she bought them both for us close your eyes keep them closed okay so I actually just picked it out for Christopher you can open your eyes now so I actually just picked it out for Christopher um but then she she's like wait doesn't your husband want one too and I was like yeah, I chose one for him, and she's like, you better choose one for yourself. <laughs> They're little unicorn pens. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, Nicole bought you a unicorn pen. I'm guessing this one's mine. Yes. I chose a purple one for Christopher, and she was like, choose one for yourself. So I did, and I got myself the little pink one. So. Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> she's never going to see this, I but... I <laughs> know. Tell her I said thank you. I... I will. It was just so cute and so funny and I was like, what? Like, it was just like funny timing, but she was so cute and she bought it for me. In case you guys are unaware, I bought like Christopher like 10 unicorns for Christmas this year, this last year, and everyone at my work was like, oh my gosh, you're crazy. What are you doing? Because I just had like a box of unicorns in the back. And... And then I was like, wait, they're not for me, they're for my husband. And so it was really cute that she like remembered that he loves unicorns and that she bought us two little matching pens. He's making them kiss. You're so cute. <laughs> I'm just holding them. <laughs> Makes me think of that part in Rapunzel. Clicks of ceramic unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> it was just really cute and I was like, oh, thanks, Nicole. So now we have adorable little pens and... I mean, they're not the worst quality ever, but they're okay. <laughs> but they're cute. Alright, so it's now like 12.15. I just got off of Skype with my sisters. We talked for a really long time, now that I'm thinking about it. Wow, we talked for like two and a half hours. It was a lot of fun though. I had a great time. We didn't talk about the book very much. Like, we talked about it a bit, but then we got like majorly sidetracked all the time and it was it was a lot of fun <sighs> it was it was a really good time and it was just like fun to check on with everyone and like see what everyone was reading and everything it was it was really great I I enjoyed it a lot and I'm, I'm glad we had it so <sighs> I wasn't aware what the next book was that we were supposed to read for our next meeting and I might have to squeeze it into my readathon on TBR because they were excluding me from a library card and I feel jilted. <laughs> Not really. So basically we all exchanged library cards so that we can all like listen to the books at the same time and stuff and somehow I just hadn't gotten one of them. And so they had this book checked out and they've been listening to it. And I was like, wait, what library is that on? I never saw that. And they were like, oh, it's this one. And I'm like, I don't have that one. And so they, they just send it to me. So now I have to fit this book in in the next few days. Gosh, I, my eye looks so irritated. Like it's bleeding, but it's, it's not bleeding, I promise. Ouch. Anyway, <laughs> I'll just go like this. So I got that library card, so I might have to fix it 
fit it in over the next few days. That's besides the point. I'll figure it out. Anyway, as far as the reading update goes for the day, um, I listened to, like, three more hours of The Highwaymen, um, and so now I only have five hours left, so I'll finish that up tomorrow morning, but I'm not reading anymore for the rest of the night because it's late, I'm tired, Christopher fell asleep on the couch, so I need to go wake him up, get him in here, I need to go find my thumbnails for the vlog tomorrow, I don't think I'll read anymore, I think I'll just like watch some YouTube videos and wash my face and fall asleep because I'm tired, my neck is starting to hurt after holding my head up talking to them for so long, and it's hard not to get a headache with that freaking fridge. <laughs> So this is where I'm going to end this vlog off. It's the next morning. I only got to three hours of audiobooks yesterday. I ended up being up till like past midnight talking to my sisters. So there was, there was just no time and I think that's okay. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> um, anyway, I just, I'm still in like happy with what I got done. So I'm currently reading The Highwaymen by Kerrigan Byrne? The Highwaymen by Ker- it's by Kerrigan Byrne. And this is obviously just like historical romance and I don't know, I'm really enjoying it so far. So I, I have high hopes that it will continue to be good? I don't know. I. I would have finished it yesterday if I didn't have like all those other things to do. It definitely would have gotten done, so uh, it'll be done soon. Anyway, so that's what I'm currently reading, and then this is what my <laughs> bullet journal looks like right now. So this is page two, which is all pinks. I did decide to reverse and go the other way around, and I like it so far. And then this is page one, which I never, actually I can do that right now. I never d actually decided to like DNF about that night and the bride on here. So I can finally do that because um, I'm not going to finish those two books. It's especially helpful having a vlog like documenting stuff at this point because it's making me, I was starting to think, oh, maybe a couple days ago, maybe I will like just finish up the rest of those two. Maybe I will try them again. And then watching myself talk about them and seeing how much I was really disliking them in the vlog, I'm like, oh yeah, no, no, I'm just gonna, just gonna DNF them and I'll see if I can find other books to fit the challenges. If not, I'll just use them because I did get past the halfway mark in both of them. Anyway, um, so let's talk about how many newts I have so far and then we'll wrap this up. So I, the last day of the vlog was the 16th and I have one, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen newts by day sixteen. Eh, could be better, could be worse. And then I have four that don't count. So let's go over what I have. So I have an Ancient Runes. I just have my A. And I did read a book for my O. I just need to fill one in for my E. For Arithmancy, I have my A, I have read my 1 for the O, and I just need my E. I have an A and an E in Astronomy, an A and an E in Care of Magical Creatures. I have my E in Charms, but it doesn't count. Um, I have an A and an E in Herbology, an E in History of Magic, so it doesn't count. A, E, and O in Muggle Studies, an O in Potions, which doesn't count yet, and Transfiguration, I have my O in that one as well. So I have two O's so far. So technically I'm set. I've completed the readathon, but I still want to get all, I want to get an O in every single category. Totally doable from this point, but I'm really happy with my progress and let's see what happens in the coming weeks. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I know it's like a big commitment to watch these, and I appreciate all the time that you take out to watch them and all the nice comments you guys leave and everything. You are all wonderful and the best ever. Thank you. And I will see you in my next vlog. Bye, everyone.